Vega, the classic burst mage, now turned into a full tank by some crazy solo queue player. Vega support has been played in pro play, including by G2 recently. But this Vega has something even more special up his sleeve, and there is one huge meta-breaking reason this champion is so good in support. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Have you ever wanted to watch a specific TV show or movie only to find out it isn't available in your country? ExpressVPN lets you control where you want sites to think you're located. You can choose from nearly a hundred different locations, giving you access to content that isn't available in your region. I live in the UK, and can't access a lot of really great movies because of strange licensing issues, but I was able to quickly use ExpressVPN to swap to being from the USA and watch what may be one of the best movies of all time, The Dark Knight. Here's a whole list of shows that aren't available in the US that ExpressVPN would let any Americans watch too. ExpressVPN is also great for internet safety. It encrypts all of your network data and tunnels it through a secure VPN server so that your ISP cannot see any of your activity, and neither can anyone else, including ExpressVPN. Sadly, every site you visit, video you watch, or message you send gets tracked by your ISP or other tech companies, who can then sell your information for profit, but ExpressVPN makes it much more difficult for them to track your data and sell it. So get the most out of your streaming services today at expressvpn.com forward slash chime, and if you use my link you'll get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Now back to Vigar. Our Vigar player today is named Transcendent Wizard, and they've actually gotten two different accounts to Korean Master using this strategy. Mr. Wizard started playing League back in Season 1. He got into ranked in Season 2. Korean players clearly are just built different, as he immediately became Platinum right away. Season 3 he hit Diamond, actually contesting Challenger at the time, but he was not quite able to make it. He had already begun to specialise in AP supports, using his high win rate brand to climb at the time. His love for brand and AP supports stayed right through all of Season 4, all the way to Season 8, where he was still holding high Diamond, but unable to push up any higher. You might think, damn what a hard stuck player, and you are correct. He occasionally popped up to Master, but it was never able to hold it through the highly competitive end of season games in Korea. Season 9 he decided to make a change to see if it could help him, testing out full AP Vega support, the same style as his brand. This new style he was inventing did start to work, but at the time he was hit with some real life responsibilities and he was never able to spend the time developing the style fully. Season 11 however is a whole new story. As soon as the item rework came out, Wizard knew this was his time to create a new OP meta pick. The new AP items, they're great, and he started testing Everfrost right away, with a lot of success. But once again he reached his Diamond 1 peak, and he started to struggle again, facing incredibly skilled opponents that did not allow him to reach the high 3400 gold required for that mythic item. He had to reconsider his strategy, or face demotion once again. So Wizard had a look at the meta supports at that time in pro play. Rel, Alistar, Leona, all tanky engaged champions whose mythic item was Locket of the Iron Solari. He knew it was no coincidence, and decided to try it out. Maybe the item is just really good, and he was correct. With this new tank style he could no longer lose lane, and he shot all the way up to master. Let me show you how he did it. As I mentioned, there is one really smart reason this champion works so well as a support. Think about pro play right now. There is one special strategy bot lane that's being used to create an extra bot lane carry, Fasting Senna. The AD carry picks Senna, but does not take any CS. Instead, focusing on collecting souls, as Senna gets a ton of gold value from them, while her support takes the CS. Now Vega, another champion with stacks. Every single time he hits an enemy, with any ability, he stacks his AP. This includes his E, even though it doesn't do any damage. So it's the same thing, you're using this stacking passive to gain a load of power for free, without having to get any CS. If we use Amplifying Tome as a measurement for AP, 1 AP is worth 21.75 gold. So each time you hit your ability combo in lane, you get 65 gold worth of stacks. This doesn't sound like much, but it actually affects his power a ton. Early game, around level 7 or level 8, his mid laner is at around 70 AP from items. Vigar support at this time will be getting around 100, no problem. Meaning, you are actually a ridiculously strong early game AP champion. This is just the first unexpected thing for enemies to deal with. As an AP support, your main goal in lane anyway is poking and pressuring enemies, looking to get them low and then hit CC to get a kill. Vigar can do all of this. He's encouraged to poke and get free stacks, and his E is ridiculously good against the AD carry and support champions. As the game goes on, this stacking system allows Vigar to continue to gain damage, even with his weird build. And so why does he build tank? Well of course, our wizard doesn't need to buy any AP, because Vega is constantly stacking it throughout the game, so instead he builds full tank. This is the second really unexpected thing enemies need to deal with, and even in Korean high elo, they have no idea what to do against it. There are so many situations where he gets engaged onto as Vega, where enemies are thinking, what the hell is this guy doing? He's an AP champion, he is so dead here, and then
then he just tanks the engage, throws a huge E stun, and walks away with a kill. Enemies expect a burst champion that is very immobile and useless. What they get is a weirdly tanky boy that is also able to max his W first for huge damage. This is the ability with the highest AP scaling in his kit, and with a tank build, he is getting a ton of cooldown reduction, so his E stun is already low enough cooldown to not worry about maxing it first. So you still remain a big damage threat with a huge execute on your ultimate. If you thought mid lane Vigar was annoying for squishy champions to play against, now imagine you have to play against him and a mid laner at the same time. There is no staying in fights if you're under 50% health. Vigar can just point and click kill you, and it's not even a risk for him to walk up to you anymore because he's so tanky. So how does this Vigar win lane every game? At level 1, Transcendent Wizard takes E. Without having a CC, Vigar is just a tiny bag of gold dancing around, so this ability gives a ton of protection for him and his AD carry. If enemies go in on him, he can just trap them in the box, inside his wave, and let his AD carry take an easy trade. No support or AD carry other than some trolling Shaco who starts Q or an Ezreal who starts E will ever be able to get out of this box at level 1, and if they do that, then the fight is already a free win anyway. Level 2 against melee engaged champions he takes his W. This is the highest damage ability, ready for a fight. If they engage, like a Leona always does at level 2, he uses box to stop them, and combos W at the same time to trade damage back. Against ranged poke supports, he takes Q second instead, because it lets him poke them back much easier and start getting some stacks. Level 3 he now has all of his abilities and can begin to look for all in traps. The E ability in bot lane might actually be the best CC there is in the game. If enemies walk near his turret, they're going to be hit by one part of it, either the side or be trapped in the middle, in a bad spot. So enemies can never walk near your tower, so they can never get tower plates, and they never even have the option to win lane. That is why the strategy is so cool. It completely denies full zones of the map, which means your team can always get an advantage. Same thing in the rest of the laning phase. The enemy AD carry always needs to walk up to the wave to get CS, right? And Vigar has this stupidly big CC circle that just sets up a free kill. You can even combo it with your AD carry CC to knock enemies into the wall for an easier trade. At level 6, Vigar gets his burst damage ultimate, which really helps with 2v2s or picks. Simply land a stun, use W, then Q, and ultimate after they've hit, and they will die to your AD carry's damage. The way this player positions his wall is possibly the most important thing about playing Vigar well. Your goal should always be to hit the outside of the wall immediately on as many champions as you can. A secret tip to help with this, the Leprechaun Vigar skin has the most OP circle, as it's the hardest to see before it appears, but Furrycorn is more cute so you decide. Many Vigar players just put the wall around an enemy and hope for the best. If this happens to Wizard, he can still almost guarantee his W landing afterwards. He positions the W away from the side of the wall, trying to trap enemies between either getting hit by the W damage or walking face first into a stun, so either way he is winning this trade. The easiest way to hit this ability is from outer vision, so enemies cannot react to it. This is much easier with support Vigar, as you are the one who controls vision for your team, so you can set up plays yourself. All high elo players recommend quick casting your E, so you really just need practice to perfect hitting it in the right spot. From this point in the game, if you're able to take any fights, take them. As I mentioned, Vigar has more damage than his mid laner, and a great CC to start snowballing the game, so you are in a perfect position to win a fight solo. From mid game, the goal of your champion is to use the CC on your E to start getting picks. You're still quite immobile, but the tank build does give you some safety to get engages and ward in important areas. In team fights, you are a tanky bait target. If enemies jump onto you, the tank build gives you time to land a huge stun and get out. Ideally, you should be providing more of a backline assistance than fully face tanking 5 people though. You do still have a lot of damage. In fights, your E is so valuable. Think about it like an Orianna with ultimate shockwave ready. You wouldn't walk anywhere near that ball if you are a squishy champion, or you could get shockwaved and lose the game. Even though he's a support, Vigar can deny an even bigger area of the map. Here's a crazy example. Walking in 3v5 a Baron trying to stop it, he uses E to stop the enemies engaging or escaping, stalling for his team. He then chases, splitting the enemy frontline and backline. Enemies cannot DPS past this wall, and their tank is absorbing 5 people's damage. Vigar's team is behind this game, so they start losing the fight a bit, but another great E guarantees a kill and a stun on the frontline, once again denying the enemies engage, forcing them back. A final chase stun kills Zed and lets Vigar's team chase for the cleanup. Since this build has so much cooldown reduction, you can spam engage over and over again, unlike many tank supports, who can only go all in once and just hope their team follows them. You do not have to commit to the play, but enemies can still be forced into bad situations. Here's another insane fight example. Once again his team is behind, but with Vigar that is not a problem. He lands a trap from Fog of War onto a priority target, the enemy mid laner, who gets bursted but stays alive in Zillion ult. The Vigar zone lasts for 3 seconds, and then 5 seconds later, Vigar has another one ready, stopping Katarina ult and bursting her with W. His team chases, and he lands a flash cage onto 2 to guarantee a 1 fight, saving Silas. He can use E 3 times in this really short fight. One very undervalued part of these fights is how he uses lock 
rocket as well. With the correct timing, this item can prevent thousands of damage being dealt in a fight. Wizard focuses on reacting to an important damage ability, meaning he's able to stop his team taking damage from it. This is great when your team is diving and you need to make sure enemies cannot turn it around, or when your team is being dived and you need to just keep them alive with some unexpected shielding. Late game, Vigar reaches his cooldown reduction dream, stun is up all the time, and he continues to get more and more stacks since he's throwing out so many abilities. In an ideal game, even as a support, you should be looking for about 200 stacks at 30 minutes. Wizard does not try to last hit kills, so this is mostly just from hitting abilities. If you're behind then stacks will be lower, but if you're getting far ahead, your damage will be just as high as a mid lane full AP Vigar. As Vigar supports this player permabans Thresh, he is the highest win rate hook support right now, and is judged by many to even be the best support in the game. You can also ban Morgana, as she is the one counter for your E, which can make laning phase, as well as late game, quite hard. Think about the Darius with spell shield running through your cage while you sit there helpless, and so maybe ban this champion. As I mentioned, he maxes W first for damage, but then E second. By this point, you reach around 50 ability haste, so you're pumping out useful abilities at lightning speed. He takes Flash Ignite most games to look for kills in lane, but takes Flash Exhaust instead against divers, including mid lane assassins, jungle assassins, or even a Tristana or Kaiser who can jump onto you at level 6 before your cage can land. For his special tank build, he starts Relic Shield with potions. He bases for Ionian Boots as soon as possible. The movement speed is really important for Vigar, so that he can get in range to hit a cage. If you for example built straight up AP here, you would actually end up doing less damage, because it would be harder for you to catch enemies. First item is always Locket of the Iron Solari. Its mythic passive gives your other items extra magic resist and armor, so it synergizes well with any tank build. Next, he gets Deadman's Plate against high AD enemy teams, or Force of Nature against high AP enemy teams. These items both give even more movement speed to Vigar, again letting him set up more kills for his team. These are your core items that can win games alone. This player really doesn't have games that go longer than this, and if he does, most of his extra gold is being spent on control wards to make sure his team can take over areas of the map, but any situational tank items would work here. If you want to try a more risky, full AP version of this build instead of tank, then an Everfrost into Cosmic Drive combo would be the best. If you are getting fed in lane, it could be worth swapping to a full AP build anyway to try and carry, especially in low elo. For his runes, Wizard runs this Guardian page every game. This gives him even more safety in lane for him and his AD carry, with his secondaries and stats giving even more cooldown reduction. I am testing this build on Twitch right now, as always. I'm always live whenever I release a new video, trying to climb to master for the first time. Thanks again to ExpressVPN for sponsoring this video, make sure you check it out in the description below. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video, new videos every week showing fun off-meta players in Master Plus, just like in this one.